Hello, my name is Larry Blight. Uh, my family are the Coins um, from the Albany area, the main country, Albany. We're at the Upper Calgon side today, an ancient waterway. It's a lovely time of the year. We're going to get out and see what sorts of bush foods we can find today. Thank you. Come with me on the journey. And the very first one is this, this tree here, which used to be known as the carry hazel. Uh, we call this one Jop Boron and Jop is a dialect, a Noongar dialect for water and born is wood. So we are almost calling this water wood and it's uh, got these flowers and leaves. We just break a few off and we will go and wash our hands with it before we start looking at bush foods today. So I'm just gonna walk on down to the waterway down here for a moment. Have we'll a look and uh, get some water and wash our hands. Just be a little bit careful of the uh, the wet ground, the tide's out at the moment, so the ground's a little bit, a little bit muddy. Got that soak here. It's beautiful soap. We also use this, the soap itself, if there's a little a little water hole with some fish in it and we want to catch some of those fish but they're too they're too quick we can't get them with a spear so we will then make up some of this soap and we will put lots of soap in that particular waterway and we give it a couple of minutes you can see the beautiful soap there it's a lovely greeny yellow soap a very strong antiseptic now we would also it puts a really nice coating on our hands uh, but we also, if we were to try to catch fish with this, we would just put enough of this into that little waterway. We'll give it a couple of minutes and the fish or the gilget will just come to the top and they're, they're a lot slower, slows their metabolism down. We'll just pick out a couple of fish for food for that day and the rest of them, we'll just leave them alone in a couple of minutes, they'll go back to, um, back to their normal habits again too. So we can use this for catching fish the same things for uh, an emu or a kangaroo that would drink from a little water hole every day. We would put some soap in that water hole and it'll slow them down for about five or ten minutes. Uh, it's not poisonous at all. It has obviously got a, a bit of a, um, I guess it's got a little bit of a property about it which may slow your metabolism down a little bit as well. So just going to wash your hands like that. And we're ready to go and look for some bush foods and some medicine plants. Oh, yes. Oh, this little plant right here. This is one of our leucopogons. Um, and there are a number of leucopogon bushes. They, uh, they do produce fruit. And this one's an early one. It's actually got a nice little bit of fruit right here right now. Well, you may know this as a tassel bush. If you can look at the, the shape of the, the leaves on them, they're like little bowls. When it rains, the water collects up top, it flows down into the next little bowl, and so on and so on, and it directs all its water down to the trunk, down to the base. And so it's very smart, but they also produce fruit. And normally, November, December is you know, like towards the end of what we call the Camberang season, leading into the Biroc season, which is like our fire season. That's when these generally fruit. Um, so we're just into the Camberang season now. So we've just finished the, um, the Chilba season, which is lots of baby animals, lots of baby birds. Um, but we've also got some beautiful fruit already on this one. Now we call this one Norley. That's its local Noongar name. Um, and the fruit right here, um, very sweet. They're like a very sweet grape. And, um, they only last about five to six weeks of the year because I love them. Um, but certainly birds will certainly go to town on these. And also some of our little bobtail species, our little reptiles will be like little vacuum cleaners and um, they'll clean up anything that drops to the ground. Uh, the pip of the seed is quite large in these things. Um, but that's a really good, it's a very smart plant. We see these around because of the large pip in these as well. And that's our fruit right there. 
okay? And I'm going to pass this on to my uh, journalist friend of mine, um, Tom, <laughs> to try this one and let okay. me have a go at it. There All you right. go. Let's try this. I'm going to stay behind the camera though. Uh -huh. <laughs> now I'll, I'll give you a bit of an update on how he's going. He's, yeah, I think he's, mm. yeah, very, quite sweet. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. You very describe, sweet. Mm. Yep. Um, mm. uh, a little bit like a sweet grape. He's definitely he's, like a grape. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. And like a grape, I could eat a whole bunch of those. Oh, that's that's a thing, and um, that's they are very addictive as well. That's uh, that's um, yeah, mm. I certainly find it very hard to go past these when they're in full fruit as well. Um, I do. I'm very mindful of leaving some for the birds, um, but you know, at the same time, the birds can leave some for us as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's wet my appetite, Larry. So let's carry on and see what else we can find. Fantastic. Let's keep going. Got another little one right here. This is a very prickly little bush. It's a little coastal heath bush. And you can see this one of these little yellow flowers, a little bit like little, little yellow candles. Now there is no fruit on this one just yet. Um, but they have little green berries and sometimes they don't get really big, about this, the biggest one, about the size of a five cent piece. Um, but they are, oh actually we do have beginning of one little berry right here actually. I'll just quickly point it out to you. I'll just show it to you right there. If you can see that little berry right there, that's um, that's what we're after. But we'll probably probably give this one another couple of weeks and it'll get a little bit bigger. These things are also very, very sweet. We call this one mull. Um, there are a number of different types of them. And once again, our little bobtails also like to eat these ones as well. They're a little bit like a sweet lolly and that the really sweet uh, flesh, the fruit, once again, a little bit like a very sweet grape and the pip also is something that you can suck on and, and children would um, absolutely love these ones as well. So this is one of our coastal heaths. They don't always have yellow flowers. Some of them have little red flowers as well, um, but they produce some really, really sweet fruit to eat as well. So that's our mole. This is quite prickly, um, so you don't want to sit on it. Okay, thank you. Oh, dear me. Well, here's another one for us to look at. Um, these these, uh, these are a, a, almost like a vegetable, I guess you could almost say. They're found on the coast, and you'll also find these up on our waterways as well. Um, its English name is Samphire. Uh, I think sometimes called sea asparagus, as you can see by the shape of it. Uh, we call this one milieu, and this is what we use for our salt, our salt intake. I mean, when we sweat, yeah, obviously we perspire and we also sweat out salt, and we need to replace that as well. Uh, I got shown this one by one of my uncles about 20 odd years ago, and it just broke off a little bit. Okay, just break off a piece. We don't pull the full plant out because we, when we break this off, it'll grow fresh, fresh. Um, Fresh little branches off it and uh, so they just keep reproducing. So this is our samphire or milieu and it's as I mentioned it's um, it's our salt intake as well. Um, always find it by waterways and a um, bit of a delicacy you can have this steamed or raw. I prefer it raw and um, it's got a slight salty taste. It can be very 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 salty in places Sometimes not quite so much. This is this is mild, and I'll pass a little bit of this on to my journalist friend Tom as well to try a little bit and see what he thinks about okay. it as well. There you are. There we go. Mmm. That is actually surprisingly salty. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yep. And it's a mm. uh, during the summertime. Uh, it sort it, it can certainly pr promote a bit of saliva if you're a bit dry in the mouth as well as also giving you that salt intake as well. If you don't need a lot of it, then that's what we use as well. Fantastic. What a beautiful view we have here too. Okay. Oh, look at these ones. These are just young, uh, one of our little bulbs. Uh, we have uh, we have a, a top of bloodroot here called the Mian or the Menang. And this is another one similar to those. This one's called Quirting and it's got a little orange bulb. They're quite stringy. They like to grow in amongst the rock. Um, 
another one that's good for your liver, your kidney as well. Um, not quite as hot or spicy as a manang or a mirin, uh, but um, still, still quite a nice little food to eat as well. So I'm going to just see if I can expose a little bit of the roots to maybe just uh, just show you what uh, what we're looking at. This is only a small one. Anyway, I'll have a bit of a look and see what we can find. Uh, there's also a bull ant nest right here as well, so I certainly know how to pick the right spots, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll have a look. Nice and easily. One thing I, when I do show young people about food gathering, uh, and we certainly show you, know, you need to be patient, um, as young people can sometimes you know, go a little bit too hastily, and and you can actually sometimes lose the food that you're looking for just by trying to rush it sometimes as well. Uh, these ones don't grow as deep as our blood roots. They can go down about a foot. The the manang, the blood root. These ones are fairly close to the surface and a little bit more stringy. And I'm just going to see if we can expose a little bit of it just to show you. Okay, like I said, this one is only a small one, so we're not going to get much off this little one. <clears throat> it's only, only tiny for the moment, but what we can do is just this little bit here. Okay, now the thing about the difference between um, these ones and our blood roots, uh, these, these ones are more orange, this one's only a young one. And the stem is slightly different too. This um, this one you can see that's it's almost a light brown colour, and it's got these little plants or these little pods that come off the side. Our blood root uh, or manang is generally a nice big dark, big stem, and our little pods are on the sides and they don't branch off like this one. Uh, this is only a tiny little bit. Now we can take a tiny bit of this off and try a tiny bit, and then we'll pop it back in the ground and we'll let it regrow. So I'll go first, just to make sure that, um, you know, say Tom is know, knowing that I'm not actually tricking him. <laughs> <laughs> that hadn't occurred to me. <laughs> You're welcome to go first. <laughs> that little bit there. No, it's actually quite sweet. And um, yeah, that's it. So I'm just gonna give this bit to Tom now. I'll just offer that to him, Tom, if you'd like to try that little I bit. I certainly will, thank you. Hmm. Just a little slither, here Just we go. Just a little slither. Mm, it's a little bit, a little bit stringy. Mm. Mm. It's not unpleasant though. No, it's not unpleasant. Um, it's almost quite sweet actually. And um, mm. It's not bitter. No, no. And it's a little bit woody, which is quite normal for these ones. But these do get to about, about this sort of size in, in that, and, they're, um, and they're almost like a little carrot in, the, in their sense as well. Mm. So. So we haven't done this any harm. You know, we're just gonna pop them back in the ground and um, let him keep growing from there. All right. I'll just put that rock back in there to keep it nice and protected. And we've been lucky with the bull ants too because uh, they're obviously snoozing, hopefully. Okay. All right, so we've got a few more that we're gonna go and find. This is a good time of the year because we just don't know what we're gonna find at the moment, but um, we've only walked Oh, 100 metres or so, and we've already looked at about five or six different types already. And um, yeah, it's a great time of the year. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So here we have our red gum, uh, one of the red gum types. This one is the Mary, the Mary tree, that's its Noongar name. Only found in southwestern Australia, and one of our most powerful medicines for a wide variety of ailments upset stomachs, uh, skin conditions, uh, cold sores, all sorts of infections as well. And we just get a bit of this resin off here, so I'll, I'll just scrape a bit of resin. Uh, I should also show you the type of nut. So you can always recognize this tree by that particular nut. Uh, they do have the largest, uh, the nut uh, from the gum, the gum tree family. So that, that, uh, that nut there is what you look for. And here we go. Up here we have some very dark resin. So once this tree, if this tree is under a little bit of stress or it loses a bit of bark, you can see it's had a bit of uh, disturbance along here. So it's just bled out a little bit. 
Um, and that, that's just full of antiseptic as well. This tree is actually healing itself and we can use that to heal ourselves as well. So I'm just going to get a little bit off of you. Just, just a little bit. And the bark can also be be eaten, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to we're just going to concentrate on a little bit of the the sap itself. I'll get rid of that. And just this tiny bit. Just pop it in there. So you can see it like this. Now, yeah, now yeah, that would be right there. Would probably be enough for a daily dose. Uh, certainly for an upset tummy, uh, you could have that and a little bit more. Give yourself about an hour. And I have described it as the best event you will ever have in your life, especially if you have an upset tummy. So uh, we can use this just as it is. And we take a little pinch of it on our tongue and we'll just swallow it. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I'm doing quite well to hold a nice face to this one, but it has certainly got a bit of bitterness to it. I do liken it a little bit to chewing on a disprin as well. Uh, I've just had just a little dose of it. Um, yeah, and uh, we can also use this and turn into a liquid as well. And we can treat all sorts of skin complaints with it, um, infections. It's just amazing how fast it works. It's such a fast acting medicine, like all of our medicines here as well. We do use it also for uh, a number of different types of cancers, stomach, uh, bladder, um, and other other types of uh, bowel cancers as well. If we get if we get an early uh, early diagnosis, we can certainly use this to um, to help us uh, recover and heal as well. Um, so, yeah, we certainly regard this as one of our most powerfulest medicines in certainly in southwestern Australia as well. Uh, animals also do use this one as well. Kangaroos, certain times of the year, upon the first rains every year. Uh, lots of the green grasses are growing through in the bush. Those kangaroos are looking for a bit of fresh greenery. So they'll nibble on the grasses, but they'll also pick up little parasites, worms and things as well. And once those worms get into their stomach or their, their kubu or their parix, their intestines, well, they need to flush them out. So they will also come up to this tree and they'll nibble on a bit of bark. And uh, the bark has obviously got just as much goodness as this stuff. And they flush all the worms out of their system as well. So it's not just people that use it, it's also some of the animals as well. Fantastic. Doesn't taste very nice though. <laughs> yes, that's it right there. I think um, I think Tom might uh, try a little bit too, I think. No, I thought I was going to get away yeah. with uh, being uh, <laughs> oh, hey, subjective. Yeah. So I'll just pinch just, some, shall I? Just give a little bit of that if you like, just a tiny pinch of it. Just on the back of the tongue? Yep, just on the back of the tongue. Okay. And, and try not to chew it. If you get it caught in your teeth. Uh, it mm. does have a slightly or very distinct taste, one that you never get used to. <laughs> mm. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, and you'll, um, yeah. That's not my favourite one that we've tried today, Larry. No, no, I, um, no, that's why we generally have this one first. We'll go and find something nice and sweet to, um, to replace that taste in our mouth. I think we should go and find some vitamin C. Good idea. Okay. Thanks again. Oh, yeah, I'm just having a bit of a look here at the moment. Uh, another one of our little fruits. And we've got this particular one. This is called Kurup. And it's a little bit, uh, I don't know its its Latin name, but these are a really, really strong vitamin C hit. And these are the fruit right there. Okay, now, a, a nice bush will, will give you hundreds of these. I'll just move that little branch out the way so you can see it a little bit better. Whoopsie daisy. And so even though these ones are green, that, that's how they are. When they're, they're ripe, they can be this. They can get a little bit bigger than this, no, sometimes twice that size. A couple of types of them. They will have a, some do have a little pink flower. Some have a tiny little blue flower and some have a little white flower. But the fruit is all, much, all pretty much the same. I'm going to go first. This is our vitamin C. So... When we're roaming through the bush, just as we're doing today, uh, if we you know, stop to find a couple of these, we'll just pick them off, get one there for myself and one for Tom. Um, and a handful of these is the equivalent of eating three or four oranges. So 
uh, you know, you don't need much of them. Uh, as, I, as I mentioned earlier to, um, to Tom, uh, the journalist, that a lot of our fruit here isn't very big, but it does certainly pack that punch and uh, it makes up for its lack of size with the amount of protein and vitamins we get out of them as well. Uh, these, these are certainly one of my favourites. And um, this time I'm going to ask Tom to go first. Oh, I'm See honoured. Like I there thought you were going to oh, I was going the to. first one, Larry. Oh, yeah, exactly. Um, All right. We'll let Tom go. Okay. It's going in. It's... Oh, wow. Yeah. Yep. It tastes like orange peel. It does. It really does, doesn't it? Mm. Um, Citrusy. Mmm. Oh, really nice. Really nice. Um, mm. And so we get a really nice vitamin C kick from this one. And we can also use the vine. This is only a smaller one, but the vine is also used for, for tying off. When we're building our structures, um, some of our shelters, we have one called a corrent, which is a bit like a teepee. And if we need to reinforce the sides of that uh, shelter, uh, in the days before we had ropes and things, we could use this as our vine, as our, as our rope as well. So like a lot of our foods that we have here, there's usually more than one usage for them as well. This one is a vitamin C and also a rope as well. So this is the Kurup. Uh, I don't know its Latin name and I won't make one up as I... No, I better not, no. <laughs> okay, we'll just see what else is around here. Uh, a couple more things we might be able to look at. And um, yeah, just a very enjoyable day out on the, on the Calgon today. Thanks. Well, that's just the just the end of our little journey this morning up the Kelgan. Uh, we've just come to this little spot here. We've got a beautiful little area. We've got fresh water coming down uh, from the hills above us, and we do find marin in here occasionally. Um, so we've got the fresh water flow, just flowing out to the uh, to the Kelgan itself, meeting up with the salt water. Um, thank you very much for watching this today, and I look forward to perhaps showing you some more uh, another time as well.